Churches is about the church family. Atina Howe, who wrote the play, is one of America's foremost playwrights. And as a matter of fact, this play was a runner-up for the 1984 Pulitzer Prize. It is a story of a breakup of a family home. The father is getting less and less competent. His daughter is coming home to clear, help clear the place up, but she is also coming home to paint their portrait. In order to make their lives easier, they are moving from the home in Beacon Hill that they've lived in all of their married life, and they're moving to their small cottage on the Cape, on Cape Cod, and this is where they will spend their final years. My character, Mags, is coming out to help them move um, and really to paint their portrait. She figures they, they're going to be in one place for three days. They can't move, so this is the opportunity that she's really been waiting for. The father is a poet, which means he loves words, which is a great character for Tina Howe because she loves words. And... He was a successful poet, a prize-winning poet, a President's Medal poet. So his loss of cohesive thought and loss of being able to find the words and loss of being able to write his own poetry is a tremendous loss. You know that this is a couple who love one another and have loved one another through a long and, and rather wonderful marriage. But this is a turning point in their lives, and how they handle this turning point with the help of their daughter is the crux of the play. This is such a beautifully, beautifully written piece. Um, the characters are very rich and well-developed. Um, uh, beautiful, beautiful piece. In the meantime, she paints their portrait. And if you think about it, in a way, it is a gift from both sides. A gift of her parents to sit for her, a gift of her to paint them probably at the last time her father is going to be at all competent. I went out to the hazel wood because a fire was in my head and cut and peeled a hazel wand and hooked a berry to a thread. And when white moths were on the wing and moth-like stars were flickering out, I dropped the berry in a stream and caught a little silver trout. When I had laid it on the floor, I went to blow the fire aflame, but something rustled on the floor, and someone called me by my name. It had become a glimmering girl with apple blossoms in her hair, who called me by my name and ran and faded through the brightening air. Though I am old with wandering through hollow lands and hilly lands, I will find out where she has gone and kiss her lips and take her hands and walk among long dappled grass and pluck till time and times are done the silver apples of the moon, the golden apples of the sun.